Solomon, our youngest brother. I want to introduce Enoch Jr., Jerry Mensah, and Dr. Michael Mensah. Then on a little note, on behalf of our mother, the widow, we the children, we want to say a big thank you to Mr. President for your unwavering friendship and loyalty to our father. May God richly bless you for standing by our father all these years. And I read, and the dust which turned to the ground it came from, and the spirit returned to God who gave it. Today we mourn the loss of an extraordinary human being, a positive force unlike any other. Our heart aches with deep personal sorrow, yet it is with a mix of sadness, joy that we write this tribute to the, to you, Dad. Finding the right words to challenge is a challenge. As they can never truly convey. Loved husband was not just a pillar of strength for me, but also for the many lives he touched. His love was boundless, his care unwavering, and his support unparalleled. As a father, he was the beacon of hope and discipline, guiding our children with wisdom and love. As a husband, he stood by my side, supporting my dreams and aspirations, celebrating my successes and holding my hand through the challenges. His humility was one of his most admirable traits. In a world where many seek recognition and applause, E.T. Mensah was content in his quiet dedication to his principles and values. He was a man who held his name in high regard, never allowing it to tarnish by compromise or deceit. His love for reading the Bible was a testament to his deep faith and his belief in accepting and loving others just as they are. I often reflect on the teachings of my revered eminent Dr. Evangelist in Notem Mensa, who was a beacon of humility, straightforwardness, and discipline. He taught us the importance of staying true to oneself, of valuing one's name, and of living a life of integrity and purpose. To Ghana, our beloved nation, E.T. Mensa was a true son. He never misused his position, always striving to make his country proud. He believed in using his name for a greater good, in service to his people and his land, Ghana. In return, embraced him, valuing his honesty, his dedication, and his unwavering commitment to his project. In the days leading up to my beloved husband's passing, our lives were enveloped in a whirlwind of hope and despair, marked by fleeting moments of joy and prolonged bouts of agony. Our journey began with an unexpected rush to the University of Ghana Medical Center, followed by an urgent trip to South Africa, followed by his unwavering trust in the doctor's day. His hopeful spirits upon our departure were a brief respite in our ordeal. The flight to South Africa was an episode filled with drama, the details of which are too painful to recount. Upon arrival, his condition necessitated immediate specialist attention, leading to his admission. During his hospitalization, there were moments of deep connection and profound sadness. Each morning, I would find solace in his presence, singing hymns together. His favorite Methodist hymn, Steer to One, which he prefers to sing the Gar version, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Witnessing the joy and comfort it brought him, this moment captured in videos I now hold dear seemed to signal a recovery as he gradually regained his strength, recognizing me by the touch of my hand. The doctors were optimistic, suggesting improvements with each passing day. However, our hope was short lived. A call from the hospital, mirroring the one received two weeks prior to about his breathing difficulties, shattered my world. Rushing to his side, I found him back on ventilator. A hurrying sigh that marked the sadness, the saddest day of my life. Against all odds, he began to show signs of recovery again, responsive to my voice and touch filling me with a joyous belief that he was getting better. We even shared a light-hearted moment when he corrected my reading of Psalm 91, a testament to his enduring spirit and talent. But fate had other plans. 
On the eve of his passing, he requested I read Psalms 91, 1 to 1 and 23. The following day, I was away. I received a devastating call. Rushing back to the hospital, I was met with the unbearable truth. My husband, my love, my everything had slipped away. The void he left is immeasurable, leaving me with memories of our trips to South Africa, his loving calls of honey, and the unwavering faith that he now rests in a better place, building a home for us to reunite. As I stand here with a heart heavy with grief, but filled with gratitude, I remember the man who was my rock, my confidant, and my friend, my best friend. In his legacy, I find strength, and in his memory, I find solace until we meet again. Rest in eternal peace, my beloved. You will forever be missed, but your spirit will live on in my heart. Ye hunu, papa. Solomon, our youngest brother, I want to introduce Enoch Jr., Jerry Mensah, and Dr. Michael Mensah. Then on a little note, on behalf of our mother, the widow, we the children, we want to say a big thank you to Mr. President for your unwavering friendship and loyalty to our Father. May God richly bless you for standing by our Father all these years. And I read, And the dust which turned to the ground it came from, and the Spirit returned to God who gave it. Today we mourn the loss of an extraordinary human being, a positive force unlike any other. Our heart aches with deep personal sorrow, yet it is with a mix of sadness Job that we write this tribute to that to you that finding the right words to challenge is a challenge as they can never truly convey the depth of our affection and the profound impact you have on our lives. As we bid farewell to you, we are reminded of the profound truth, unlike a kernel of what of wheat is planted and the soil dies, it remains alone. But it is that will, will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new life. Your departure from the, this world leaves a void that can never be filled. For, for if love alone could have saved you, you would have lived forever. In the words of Maya Angelou, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. People will never forget how you made them feel. You made everyone feel loved and cherished. God, in his mysterious plan, suddenly called you away from us, leaving behind your children, your amazing grandchildren, and all those who loved you. The spaces you brightened in our life will forever remain empty. Dad, you were not just a father, but also a friend, a hero, a warrior. Your legacy of love, kindness, will continue to inspire us, we take solace in knowing that you are in a better place now. You brought happiness, love, all those around you with your positivity, cheerfulness, and radiant energy. You taught us the importance of standing up for what is right, and even in the face of adversity. It was an honor to be in your presence when, you, when we are proud, we are proud to be your children and we will carry the lessons you have impacted with us all, always. We watch an interview when you perform, you probably describe some of your parenting skills, including one that we remember so vividly, how you will put the only colored TV outside for other kids at our compound house to watch when then popular Ghana TV shows with reading assignment, with green assignment, your explanation was read. Education is the key to success. One day you will have many TVs and not even time to watch them. Your life has shown us profound impact. One person can have on lives of many, leaving lasting legacy. 
that will continue to inspire generations to come. Your leadership was a beacon of hope, progress, and challenging times. You always work towards the greater good, a state man. You exemplify values of integrity, diplomacy, tireless commitment, the well-being of your fellow citizens. That we gladly share with you the rest of the world. Your life was symphony of, of service, compassion, wisdom. We are forever inspired by the way you dedicated yourself to making this world a better place. Your legacy as a statesman and your unwavering love for him have left an indelible mark on our hearts and in the world. Indeed, an Iroko tree has fallen. We have lost a precious soul. We will remember your thought-provoking engagement with us, particularly in America. We will cherish your love and unforgettable moments. We, we finally remember the birthday party we organized, we organized for you in America on the occasion of your 55th birthday. One, on this special occasion, you exhibited open warmness and deep appreciation to, to us for honoring you graciously. You en enjoy the mainly summer barbecues organized on your behalf. We will cherish your passion for knowledge, always asking for and about the latest thought-provoking political and religious books on the market. We inherited the love of books, reading from you. From most men. He had passion, he had vision, and he was a perpetual bundle of energy and intellectual. He was untiring and unrelenting in his pursuit of whatever goals or objectives he set himself. And that passion paved the way to this spectacular success in life. To say that E.T. was successful in his lifetime is only to... As a party activist, he performed his part excellently. Today, we mourn a great man, a statesman. Remember to emulate his words and strive to continue to cherish his memory and live life to be a memory so that those who come after will remember our footprints on the sands of time. A great tree has fallen, but I believe the fallen tree will give us seeds which will generate into acorn, further enhance the forward march of this country. This I am sure it will want to see wherever the good Lord has placed him. He was an evangelist, a doctor of theology, and I am sure his Christian life will endure him to the bosom of the Lord. A friend, a brother, an icon, and a statesman. You were a great citizen. You have run a race. You have won the race. Thank you very well, Honorable U.T. Mensah. We receive the Council of State, the Chairperson, His Royal, Maj Royal Highness, Nanao Trusribo II,
the changing things of life, in trouble and in joy, the praises of my God shall still my heart and tongue employ. The I have all a man of many talents. The person I'm referring all this to is the man in us.
aviaspress.com. Aviaspress.com, the media, yeah, 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 and here in our country, every Ghana and Africa, and Papua and Asante, here, can tell me about our friend out there that our home party is here now. If you are here, bra abiexpress.com. Yeah, they are from Kwa Nyama. Oh, yeah, they are from Kwa. Abiexpress.com. Yeah, they are here. 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 Express.com. Now you are here now. What's Sabeka? Express.com. Where they end your move? Express.com. Where they pop pop pop. Express.com. You're the Ghana. Help swallow your chili.